Hundreds of years have come and gone. Opinions and ideas are always changing, but one thing has remained constant since then. St. Anthony of Padua is still considered to be one of the most popular saints in the Catholic tradition. Canonized by Pope Gregory IX just 11 months after his death, Anthony's popularity has been a phenomenon for nearly 800 years. Today, roughly four to five million pilgrims visit his basilica every year in Padua, Italy. Closer to home, the city of Toronto renewed its connection to Anthony of Padua in a special way. The Franciscan Church of St. Bonaventure in Toronto hosted his relic in a public exhibition. Join me today on Catholic Focus as we delve deep into the life of Anthony of Padua and reflect on Salt and Light's documentary, Finding St. Anthony, A Story of Loss and Light. Hello and welcome to Catholic Focus. Joining me today in studio are Anna Marzigliano of Toronto, as well as Father Paolo Floretta from Padua, Italy. Welcome to the both of you. Thank you. And I want to begin our discussion today with you. Um, you were, in a way, responsible for the recent relic exhibition. The relic of St. Anthony of Padua traveled to Toronto and came to St. Bonaventure's parish. How was St. Bonaventure's chosen for the relic exhibition? This has now become an annual event, at least for the past four years it has been done. And it's become a little bit of Padua in Toronto. And the response has been great. Father, currently you are stationed in Padua, Italy. Mm -hmm. And Padua is home to one of the most beautiful basilicas that is dedicated to St. Anthony. How prominent is Anthony in Padua? Okay. Well, St. Anthony is the patron. Okay. Padua. Anything in Padua is, uh, is talking about St. Anthony. Just uh, um, the Paduan people uh, talks about St. Anthony just about the, the saint without a name. Okay, so it's a very point of light for, for the city because St. Anthony is uh, a good example of life, of okay. course, and, uh, and also for the history of the city because the, the Paduans built the Basilica all together for St. Anthony. As you know, Salt and Light just released uh, its new documentary on St. Anthony. It's called Finding St. Anthony. So we're going to take a little break and we're going to listen to just a segment from that documentary. saints who fly to heaven on wings of contemplation who are so removed from the world that they have no concerns on earth about saints can be a big turnoff for a lot of people. I think for a couple reasons. One is uh, we put people with the term saint on a pedestal. Father Dan Haran, a Franciscan friar, doctor of theology and author, is a frequent speaker on Franciscanism and Christian spirituality. His most recent book, Dating God, offers a fresh look at the human longing for relationship with God. After a while, the stories all kind of sound the same. Yeah, they were really holy, they were really good, they did miracles, they were very forgiving, they did all these different special things. And in the end, what we do is we say, they're not like us. And so that can be a big turnoff. What is it about somebody like Anthony of Padua? What is it about somebody like Francis of Assisi that I can relate to that has any meaning for my life? Now our viewers just watched just a brief segment of Finding St. Anthony, a story of loss and light. The two of you had the chance to watch the film at home. 
What were your first impressions? My Anna? first impression? I was very happy that you made it in the way that you did. Had I just watched The Life of St. Anthony, I wouldn't have gotten all that rich information that was received from the people that made the comments. I might have missed at least 50% of it. Okay. Father Paolo, what did you make of the story of the, of the guests that were used? Uh, in my opinion, uh, this, uh, this, this movie uh, helps to understand um, how St. Anthony lived in their time and uh, his mentality, the mentality of, uh, of that time is much different from, uh, from our time. And um, the movie is, uh, is, is very well done. And, uh, and mostly I appreciate the, the, the last part of this movie because uh, it's about the meaning of the mm -hmm. sanctity uh, today. Uh, we don't need another Anthony, we don't need another Francis, we just need uh, a saint for these days. For today, yeah. For today, yeah. Talking about saints can be a big turnoff for people. It can be considered taboo. And that was mentioned really at the, at the beginning of the film. Would you agree with that? that we shouldn't be talking about saints, we shouldn't be talking about their example, we shouldn't be talking about religion? I agree that sometimes the response we get is that it is taboo and I shouldn't be speaking about it. I think that it's our responsibility to find a way to speak about saints and make it so that it is comfortable for the person that is listening to us but I think the responsibility lies with us to find the way to talk about saints. Mm -hmm. Father, why should we look to the saints for inspiration in our daily life? Why should we look to St. Anthony? Talking about a saint is talking about um, a view on life. Mm -hmm. Okay, so talking about St. Anthony is, uh, is talking about how he thought about the life and he thought, he thought about the life from uh, the God point of view. Okay. In my opinion, a saint is not just a strange person that uh, stays uh, very far from us. True. A saint is a dream, a dream of God, mm -hmm. a realized dream of God. Okay, okay I am a dream. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just I have a dream because I could have many dreams, but I am a dream. I am a dream because this is my deepest identity is, uh, is from God. Mm -hmm. Okay, a God dreamt me and give me the opportunity to realize it step by step, bricks on bricks, little by little, and, and day by day, today. Mm -hmm. And in Sicily, he recovered first physically, but then he recovered spiritually because he understood for the first time in his life that uh, he has to do what God wants him to do. It was at that point that he began to question whether his desire to go to Morocco was from the Lord or was it from Anthony. And I'm sure it didn't happen in an instant. It probably happened during this long voyage and the storm tossed seas and so on as he was wondering, what did he do wrong? A lot of us get to this point where we think we're following God's will and God keeps closing doors. Sometimes he pushes us down the steps, you know. Not only does he close the door, we, pushes, we fall down the steps behind us, you know. And we're saying, what's happening? Why, you know, here I thought I was doing this and I thought you wanted me to do this. And it's like, it's not working. In the film, Anna, we learned that Anthony tried to do God's will, even though doors were closed on him. In our everyday life, um, you and Father, myself, how can we do God's will in our life? By doing what we need to do right where we are. Um, we can't do big things. I know I can't. Um, so if daily, whatever is presented to me, I try to do it to the best of my ability, that's God's will for that day, for me. Okay, would you like to add to that, Father? In my opinion, it's uh, first of all about listening to the reality, the reality we are and the reality around us. Mm -hmm. Okay, the reality we are because in front of God, we are unique. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are an, uh, 
again, a unique dream. And um, we have our message from God to share with the other people. And we have to listen to the, to the reality too, because uh, reality is just um, our opportunity today to share our life. And this is the, um, the way to understand uh, what God is uh, asking us. How can the everyday Catholic relate to St. Anthony? Honestly, St. Anthony is, um, is felt as a friend. Okay, so it's a, a very immediate um, relationship. No, we, we, don't need, uh, we don't need special uh, in introduction no, to mm -hmm. St. Anthony. No? It, it's, okay, St. Anthony, I'm here and just help me to understand what is, what is important for me, what is useful for me, what is useful for, uh, for, for the life uh, also of, of my, my family, my friends, my, my work. Father, talk to me about St. Anthony. What miracles um, can be attributed to him? And how did his canonization come about in the church? The miracles, plural, and are thousands and thousands during the history. And immediately after, after that, St. Anthony uh, answered to the, to the prayers of his devotee uh, uh, by miracles, okay? And his uh, canonization was just, uh, is just a record because he was proclaimed saint just uh, 11 months mm -hmm. after his death. So <laughs> nobody, nobody beat this. Yeah. <laughs> his canonization brought in the church uh, um, a charismatic man that uh, enlightened and enlightens the, um, the, mind, the minds of many people. The main part of the charisma of St. Anthony is just to be a listener, mm -hmm. a deeper, a deep, one of the deepest listeners in the, in the history of the church. There are many losses with which we have to deal in our lives. And I believe that Anthony lived those losses, but he also found ways to respond positively in those areas of loss in his own life. So Anthony came to the point of saying, okay, you take the reins now. Instead of me taking the reins, I'm going to let you take the reins. The idea was that I have to empty myself of myself, of my self-will, of my desires, of my materialism, of my sins, of everything that's worldly in me in order for God to come in and fill me up. If I'm all filled up with me, God can't come in there. In the film, we noticed that it is rich in symbolism. Um, what were some symbols that stood out for you when you watched Finding St. Anthony? The one that stood out for me was when the explanation and the instruction was that in order for us to do God's will, we have to empty out ourselves mm -hmm. so that there is room for God. And so the, the glass of water mm -hmm. and the physical seeing it that when it was full, nothing else could go in. It would just spill out. Whatever was going in was going out. Mm -hmm. In order for us to receive it, we must get ourselves out. And that was emptying out the water. There is room for more water. Beautiful. Any other symbols, um, Father, that Anthony um, is, is known for? St. Anthony was portrayed in the first oldest images uh, holding the gospel because he was a, a preacher, mm -hmm. a great preacher. Mm -hmm. And another symbol also is the, the Franciscan tunic okay. to, to symbolize the most radical attention to the gospel. Mm -hmm. Okay. And other symbols are about uh, bread, okay. bread because St. Anthony is a um, saint of, of charity. Okay. So bread is, is the symbol of charity in general. And also the baby Jesus. Mm -hmm. Baby Jesus is experience he had one month before dying. Okay. And um, probably to symbolize that uh, baby Jesus was born inside him. And so he, he had the grace to, to see him outside, just, just mm -hmm. to talk with him. Of all the religious and monastic communities there, on the, there are in the world, the Dominicans, um, the Franciscans, what attracted Anthony to the Franciscan community? Before becoming a Franciscan was uh, Augustinian. Okay. And um, for him was not a so, um, 
as a deep experience about gospel. Mm -hmm. He was searching something, something more. Okay. Once he, he met uh, De Franciscan, understood that, okay, this is the way for me, because it's a, a more radical way to follow the, the gospel. And he, he became Franciscan, uh, uh, after, by the way, after the, the martyrdom of this first Franciscan that uh, went to the Morocco to be, to be missionaries uh, there. And when, when he came back, uh, St. Anthony was shocked about this, uh, the, this death and, okay, okay I, have to, I have to do something for this. I have to, have to, have to, have to choose the, the mm -hmm. most ra radical way. I want to be a martyr too. But mm -hmm. fortunately for us, <laughs> God, <laughs> God, uh, God thought very different. God had another plan for him, exactly. Uh, another plan, yeah. <laughs> now we talk about Anthony being attracted to the Franciscans. What attracted you to the to the order? To the order, uh, I remember uh, mostly the serenity of life of, uh, of one friar that that met me for for the first time. I was attracted by by his uh, his inner peace, okay. and this was the main path of my life. Just searching this this kind of, of peace uh, in this uh, uh, in this way, in this way of gospel. Yeah. Okay. Anna, what inspires you the most about St. Anthony? The most is that he is a saint for all people. Everyone can relate to him. Uh, he is very human. Uh, he tried. He thought he was following God's will, but God had other plans for him, as you mm -hmm. said. Mm -hmm. And that happens to us every day. We all think we're doing our best. We all think we are following what we're supposed to follow. We all see that everyone else has losses, but we never think of those losses as being a, as great as ours. Mm -hmm. So this brings to mind that my loss is no greater than your loss. Mm -hmm. And somehow we live through it. That makes us better. And finally, we do. When we're patient enough and take the time to listen and follow, then we do see the light. And we do see that what happened to us, it was not bad. It turned out to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. It has brought us to where we are at this point. Where do we go about from here? Uh, you just wrapped up a very successful relic tour. Mm -hmm. uh, you traveled to three cities. You're in Montreal, Toronto, and Burlington. And New York. A and in New York February. as well in the United States. Father Paolo will be going back to um, Padua. Mm -hmm. Will you be returning anytime soon in the future? Will, will the relic be coming on tour again in, in, uh, in the near future? Uh, near future? I don't know. But uh, for next year, we're starting to plan now. I've already got a few parishes that are quite interested in having us visit. Mm -hmm. So next year for sure, this year, maybe. Okay, <laughs> uh, just one more question that I'd like to ask you, Father. If people can't come out to the relic exhibition, you know, for those who are shut in, for those who are homebound, how can they pay homage to St. Anthony? Mm, I said before that the relationship with saints in general is, uh, is just immediate. No, it just they, they could pray Saint Anthony, please Saint Anthony, help me to mm -hmm. do something or to understand something more. Okay, to to be coherent uh, with my life. Um, I think this is the, the the best the best way. Prayer from the heart. Okay, Saint Anthony, just help me. Okay. Well, that's all the time we have uh, for Catholic Focus today. I want to uh, thank the both of you for coming in. Anna Marzelliano from Toronto and Father Paolo Floretta all the way from Padua, Italy. Thank, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. You're thank welcome. you. You're welcome. For our viewers at home who have missed the world television premiere of Finding St. Anthony, A Story of Loss and Light, be sure to visit our website. That's saltandlighttv.org forward slash St. Anthony for more information on the film. And that's it for Catholic Focus today. We welcome your feedback. Send us your questions and your comments to focus at saltandlighttv.org. For Catholic Focus, I'm Andrew Santos. Until next time, thank you for watching. <laughs>